Hello and welcome to Show, Store, or Sell, presented by Crushing Comics. This is the show where I go through over 140 short boxes that are filled to the brim with comic books that I largely have not seen since 2017 or before. That's when I moved to New Zealand, so that's when they were all packed up, and I kind of know what's on the shelves around me, but I don't always remember what were in these boxes, why I bought them, or if I still need them, which is where the shelf store or sell comes in. This box, it's number 1119, it says Marvel Wolverine may need for binds. So I think the important thing to remember as we dig into this box is that I put together a lot of this collection, I'm going to take out this crinkly thing before I talk, I put together a lot of this collection before there were epic collections and before there were these kind of pseudo epic trades that came out, like the Larry Hama and Silvestri sequence of trades that covered from Wolverine like 30-ish to 50s something. So I bet that's what some of this is going to be, and I don't need any more. And these are some pretty classic issues that I will be happy to sell if that's the case. And I, well, apparently this is after that, because we're starting with Wolverine number 58. Now this is still Hama's run, but this is after the Silvestri part of the run. I do remember that two of these issues kind of fit into a um, earlier sequence. So I want to get a few issues past this before I get to one that I check out who the artist is. So there's a lot of Sabretooth stuff happening here. This is relatively early in the 1991 relaunch of X-Men. So this issue number 62 is from 1992. And let's just take a look inside because we can. So this is in pretty good shape, I have to say. I mean, the binding, the, the spine, the um, staples a little bit on the spine, but I think this is, is this one of my original comics? Probably not, because this looks like a newer bag and board. I think it was like another year before I was buying Wolverine, so we will run into those in this box, I bet. Um, so yeah, it's Larry Hama and Mark Texiera drawing. And Texiera is a you know pretty remarkable artist. He had come off of doing Ghost Rider. I really love his Wolverine phases here. Really, really cool stuff. So the thing is, this is all going to be an epic collection. Like we can go forward with complete faith, knowing that epic collections are going to cover this because that's the point. So before that, I really thought I was going to have to map it into binds. And looking through this, that's actually absolutely what I was doing. Uh, you know, we have 64, 65, that one's not in such great condition, uh, 66, which for some reason I have two of. 67. I'm trying to think of where I would have been picking this up myself. Like I'm looking for a cover that I like kind of remember from the shelf. It might be this one, 70, only because 71 has Rogue on it and I probably would have started buying it for Rogue. We're into 1993 now though and the covers are still not super ringing a bell. I feel like we're into maybe Andy Kubert on art here. We're into 73. You have to think at that time, Wolverine did not participate in X-Men crossovers and stuff like that. So like Executioner Song, and that was the first crossover in this 1991 era. He was not in that. Oh, do you remember these ads? Is it a video? More action than adventure. And then it was this, it was this Dungeons and Dragons thing. Actually, the foldout is about other Marvel books, but the, the ad was about Dungeons and Dragons. I, to this day, don't know what it was. Like, I think you were supposed to get this video. It wasn't even Dungeons and Dragons. It was like off-brand Dungeons and Dragons from Dragon Strike. Oh no, but it is TSR who at the time made Dungeons and Dragons. So I guess it was like guided on video. I never really, even at the time when I was around in the VHS age, I never understood these games that you got like a videotape because videotapes unless you had like a really specific kind of vcr you couldn't just tell it to go to a certain time code so you would be it'd be like advanced to four minutes and you'd be like hitting the test forward button to get to four minutes this is Dwayne turner doing back breakdowns with joe rumenstein on finishes larry hama of course wrote and wrote and wrote wolverine so probably this whole run is going to be all larry hama 74. So then we get to 75, where Wolverine does participate in a limelight event. This is Fatal Attractions, and this is absolutely my original copy. I can tell because it has terrible tape that is way too sticky that I should have never used on a comic bag. We're going to try not to get it stuck to the comic. So this is one of my original comics from whenever this came out, 93, 94, 93. It's in really good condition, y'all. I mean, I, there's a little bit of a notch on the top, probably just from like setting it down and, and reading it, but the, the cover is nice and bright. Look at that hologram. Are you feeling the 90s? Am I transporting you back in time right now to the 90s? 
And uh, this is before they were on that glossy paper, but it's on a nice white paper that's got some creaminess to it. It's really nice to the touch. It still kind of has that new comic smell after all these years. It still has that... I, this is like turning into a weird ASMR video. Listen to the tape as it unsticks. Listen to me sniff the comic book. But uh, it's in great condition. I mean, go, go teenage me. Uh, and of course, this is the book where Wolverine famously loses his adamantium because he, well, actually, he technically loses it in X-Men 25 to Magneto because they all go to Asteroid M because they're like, Magneto's officially gone too far. And Magneto's like, oh, you think I went too far before? How, what if I take all the adamantium out of Wolverine? So then I think I was buying it monthly because these are all looking really familiar to me. 77, 78. Really, again, it just speaks to how nicely I kept my comics. This nice white cover. I mean, that's still like a nice bright white. Somebody's really going to luck out, whoever gets, <laughs> gets to buy these from me. Because guess what? I've been paying attention to the singles market a little bit more recently since I've been... Um, doing these shelves to ourselves. And the singles market is going freaking bonkers right now for 90s things. Because I think everybody just decided to like take up different kinds of collecting. I, I do not think the logo of work stretched out that big, personally. But everybody took different kinds of collecting up while they were at home during the pandemic. And like, you know, even though we all think of these 90s comics as having been a dime a dozen and, you know, being in the quarter bins, all it takes is some demand. Like even if there are 5,000 extant copies. And there's probably way, way more than that. But in terms of people who are on the internet, I love this cover. Let's let me finish my thought, then we'll get into that. In terms of people on the internet who are looking for co you know copies, let's say there's 5,000 between eBay and my comic shop and Mile High and all these other places. That gets exhausted pretty fast when you have a large group of people. When we say people are into something like Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh or comic books during the pandemic, we're not talking about two people. We're talking about a huge, huge crowd of people. That's why we're noticing it, right? So like, it's, you know, there could be a thousand of them, two thousand in the round that gets worn down really quickly. And that's how we get into these shortage situations. You know, things that we think of as being unlimited. And a lot of these comics had over a hundred thousand comic print runs. But in terms of the ones that are still in decent condition, that are still available for sale today, it's not an infinite amount. Even for, you know, X-Men number one and X-Force number one, which were million sellers, it's not an infinite amount. And those books are creeping up in cost. I saw some X-Men number ones this week that were going, that were in like really nice condition. They were going for like 20, 30 bucks uh, because they were gradable comics. And like mine, I've probably read way too many times to sell them for that. But it's just crazy to think about these comics. Actually, who knows? Maybe the speculators will have turned out to be right in the long run. I just love this cover. That's by Adam Kubert. It's really striking. You don't see Marvel do this a lot. Just do a black and white cover with a spot of red. Of course, now they're doing Wolverine, black, white, and red. Uh, but then I feel like they kind of ruin it by having that mauve color on the logo. Should have been red or black and white. But this is at this point, and such nice bright white too. At this point, is this a deluxe edition? This is direct. I don't know if I would say that this paper is glossy, but it's definitely like a brighter white paper. And uh, at this point, Adam Kubert was penciling. There's so much more, by the way. <laughs> I'm like not even a third through this. I just, we're really into stuff that I was collecting at the time, which I don't know if we've been through a box of singles that I actually bought at the time in the 90s yet. So I just have a lot of memories tied up with a lot of these comics. So I was still buying monthly, and then Wolverine is in another crossover with his bone claws. This is Phalanx Covenant. This probably is not in as good shape because I read this a lot of times. So you can even tell from the, um, the backing board. And this must not be acid free because I'm seeing some color leech. Peter, buying those cheap bags and boards back in the 90s, what are you doing? So then we're cruising forward until we get to 88 with Deadpool on the cover, 89, and then we get to 90, and I, I forget if it's right before 90 or right after 90, that's when the line gets paused for Age of Apocalypse. And at this point, they are being billed as deluxe, and they are on glossy paper. Whoa! So there's a, there's a fold-out page right away, and now I'm getting it stuck to my old tape. Don't mess up my comic. Okay. Yeah, this starts out with a fold-out. I, you know, I've never looked in any of the collected editions, I think. I wonder if this has been collected. I can't think off the top of my head. And another? Oh, no, no. This is just three. Um, I don't know what they've done in collected editions for this. I mean, it was at least in the essentials. So, but it's on a really nice glossy paper. It's really held nicely all these years. And there's another fold out at the end. Is it a double? No, just a single, but another one at the end. I totally forgot that this was a thing. And this looks like Mark Texiera, not Adam Hubert. Now I've got to unfold them all. Now it's Cupert on pencils. This just is, looks really rough and sketchy for Cupert. But then 
just, oh, this, I remember this. Talk about things I remember. Oh, it is four. Wow, I don't even know if I have a way to safely hold this up on camera for you. Uh, can you can you see it? So wow, yeah, we're gonna, this is delicate stuff here. But then I definitely remember this last page because Wolverine is about to pop the third claw into Sabretooth's head. And instead we go to the Age of Apocalypse. Cool stuff. So then it comes back from the Age of Apocalypse and it kind of just feels like they're just biding their time until they're gonna do something about this Bone Claws plot. Like it just, I remember it kind of getting unmemorable and I was on my way out in this point because I think I only collected for some reason I have two of these probably because I bought a, a run. Oh, you know what? Maybe it also crosses over with something because they're in, he's with Gen X, but I was out by this point. I definitely didn't have this originally. And now we're gonna keep going. And here, this was a $1 comic I bought uh, and, and I have multiples of that one too. Probably because I had to buy a couple of lots to get this. So it just keeps going and going, y'all. Wolverine, uh, 97, and I don't recognize any of these covers. 98, so this, 99, 100. And here's the thing, this had a, I'm not even taking this out of the bag. This had like a hollow foil cover, but I wanted the plain one because for binding, it's really hard when you bind stuff that has those thick cardboardy covers. So it was so much more expensive. This was one of the most expensive comics I bought from 2011 to 2015, because I had to track that down. Also, there's a 102. Five? Oh, I'm not showing them to you. There's a 102.5 that's um, like a send away issue or like it, you got it from trading cards or from wizard or something. And I don't think I have that because I think I decided it was so expensive that I wasn't gonna track it down. So look, I, I'm not gonna show you every one. We're, we're talking like another 50 and it goes through Onslaught. This is pretty cool. Wolverine and Electra, nice black and white cover there or black, white and red, I should say. Another one here. So we keep going and these are books that I like basically hoarded because I really thought I was gonna bind them all and I haven't I haven't ever read this Wolverine run. 113, 114. So that's probably as far as I was gonna bind, 114, because after that, there's a lot of trades that picked up that were already out. So I probably like plotted like, well, if I get through 114, I'm pretty confident from there to the end, there's gonna be trades. But then I have a lot of these one shots which are going to be interesting to hold on to to see if they put them in epic collections or not, such as Wolverine Save the Tiger. So, but I think this is actually a collection of um, Marvel Comics Presents Wolverine stories rather than a one shot. But in the early 90s, up until 94, 95, Wolverine had specials and OGNs rather than annuals. Yeah, this is this was originally Marvel Comics Presents 1 through 10. So he uh, so he, they would put out an OGN or, or a special in place of his annuals, but a lot of times they would be prestige format. So this I don't even really need. It's just like a cool artifact, but um, it's been collected in epics at this point. But then there's this one, which I have several copies of because it's it's got this cool um, embossed cover. It was a send away comic for the World Wildlife Fund, but I bought three of them because I wanted one for Namor Bind, which now I may or may not do. The epics aren't that far yet. Wolverine Bind, and I don't know if it's been in the epics yet, and maybe a Kazar, Kazar Bind, I don't know. So I know I have three of that. And then we get into annuals, 95, 96. 97, and then we get into these one shots and I've got to go through and see my guide and see if these have been properly mapped into the epics. So we have Wolverine Black Rio, one of my all time favorites, Ghost Rider Wolverine Punisher, which did get its own trade paperback release, I think along with the second part of this, well, I mean, sequel, Dark Design. And then Night of Terra, so that's one of those OGNs and I do think that's been in the epic line. And then Reign of Terra, and then Killing, and then what else is in here? I might just narrate. I don't know if I'm gonna ooh, go through every one, but there, there's Wolverine, Bad Rock and Wolverine from Image, Wolverine Inner Fury, Wolverine Evolution. I do really love this cover with Wolverine and Boom Boom. So yeah, if all goes well, these should mostly be in his epic line. Wolverine Inner Fury, Wolverine Bloodlust, great Alan David Davis cover there. Wolverine Doombringer. Yeah, and then a couple more annuals. This just keeps going and going. And then I have some mini series, which I don't, including Wolverine and Punisher damaging evidence. And then I have a bunch of newer one shots. They weren't really collecting to my liking, like under the boardwalk. And then I also have Wolverine Sodod, which we saw a few episodes ago in that Wolverine Europe collection, but maybe, or Marvel Europe, but maybe I didn't realize I was gonna be able to find it in Marvel Europe, or maybe I thought I was, I think at one point I planned a bind that was gonna be like Wolverine Odds and Ends. There's another one, Rampaging Wolverine, that at the time had not been collected, but then I think they finally did kind of put out like an Odds and Endsy Wolverine collection. 
But then there's like even more stuff in this box. All right, we're gonna see. I'm just gonna take this all out at once and we're just gonna see. I wonder if it's gonna be Wolverine related or not. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's like all different random stuff. Okay, so. Uh, oh, this, okay, this is cool. These were my first three Marvel comics that I ever had off the spinner rack. They're from, and they're in terrible shape. They're from 1986 and 1985. We must have probably, we were probably like down the shore, especially this one. Here's the origin of why I like pink on covers of comics, y'all. This is the whole story. We were probably like down the shore, and New, the New Jersey shore, one says down the shore if they're from Philadelphia. And I probably need something to entertain me. And they're like, oh, let's let's get a uh, cap firing a machine gun. That will be entertaining. So even, I, I probably read them. I definitely read this web of Spider-Man a lot of times. And this probably explains a lot of like why I am like I am. Because it's it's like a middle issue and it like continues into another issue. And I, pro and I clearly read it a million times by the condition it's in. And I probably was always wondering as a kid, like, what happened? What happened next? And then you turn into a person who has 30,000 comic books. There you go. Then this, which is collected now, I'm gonna give this to the kid as a surprise, the X-Men Survival Guide to the Mansion. It's spiral bound. It's this like flip book of like blueprints and stuff from the mansion. Really unusual. I mean, why, why would Marvel put out a spiral bound book, you know? But uh, this is, actually, this is in pretty good condition. I would be tempted to, and it's got that 90s layout, man, with all the different friggin' fonts. I would really be tempted to sell it just because it's in good condition, but I think I'd rather give it to my kid. She would really enjoy it. It's got all these schematics of the mansion and stuff. I'm pretty sure they collected this in full on a recent omnibus. Spiral bound. Wild. Marvel just doing wild, wild now. Doing wild stuff. And so that's, we're going to, that's, a, I guess that's kind of a shelf in a way, because it's going to go on her shelf by the time I give it to her. And then... Oh my gosh, talk about my original, original comics. This is Peter Porker, Spider-Ham. This was I, another 86, 85, 86, 85. So this is probably from that same trip to the spinner rack. Just nostalgia. I, I mean, I, it's in terrible condition and I and I don't want to sell it. I, I would maybe like get this framed or CG graded and just put it on the wall. I mean, it's going to get a terrible grade, but just out of like nostalgia. And then, <laughs> well, I have... Two comics from my original and Candy Run that are just in terrible condition because I took the staples out of these. It's that classic Cap issue in 268 and the rogue comes back and fights Miss Marvel issue in 269. And I took out the staples. So I don't think you're going to be able to see. So I could trace it because I was like so into comics. This is so beat up. So this is apparently we've hit the nostalgia section. And then after the nostalgia, I have a bunch of web of Spider-Man and then like some Batman. I don't even know what's going on here. So I have these random two issues of Web of Spider-Man. They just feel like they're in the wrong home. I mean, like maybe Wolverine guest appears. I have no idea. And then I have some Shadow of the Bat. What? Why? I, I don't know. I just have these random two Shadow of the Bat issues. And then I have uh, Legends of the Dark Knight and some, just some random stuff. So I don't know if I was just like in a panic and I was packing and I just like threw things in here because these don't have anything to do with Wolverine at all. So I, I'm like even stymied to try to summarize them for you because they're just like super, super random. So this is this box has been a journey. It should have been labeled Wolverine like 50s to beginning of trade era slash nostalgia comics slash random Batman issues. Why do you have these? And I really don't know. I, mostly the only reason I ever have Batman is for Catwoman. But I, I know I just have this because I like the cover. I remember buying this back in the day. Poison Ivy on the cover, but I could not tell you. So that was eventful. Um, I think, I mean, none of it is a shelf necessarily because it's, it's not shelvable. I mean, there are no collections in here. But also, there are things that already exist on the shelf behind me in Epic Collections. Just trying to put these somewhere safe. So there's no reason to shelve them again because they're already shelved, uh, except for this really cool X Men Survival Guide, which I am going to regift to the child. So that has been a really intriguing journey on shelves to our cell. And of course, these nostalgia comics. I kind of want to just take them out and have them put them somewhere other than the middle of a Wolverine box. So these, in a way, are shelved, right? Because I'm never going to sell them, and they have sentimental value for me, especially this Web of Spider-Man issue. Maybe I'll sit down and read it. Maybe I'll do a special review of my first ever 
Marvel comic book and try to explain why I am the way that I am based on that. But that's been this very unusual episode of Shelf Store Self. Thank you so much for watching. I have so much fun digging through this. When I get to a box like this, it's like excavating my own history, my past, and, and my stories. And I'm so excited when I get to share them with you, even if it's kind of overwhelming as it really was in this issue. So, uh, episode. So tune back in for more on this channel. If you're enjoying this, if you have some of these comics that I have, or if you've read some of these ones that I'm like, what even is this? Let me know below. And until I get to see you again, I very much hope that you are well.